Okay, FAQ number 94. What is replacement theology? I've done a lot of work on this whole thing of debunking, uh, in particular, Stephen Anderson, the modern uh, false prophet that he is, and uh, his time's coming. Uh, you aren't going to mess around with the Word of God like this, and, and like he does, and uh, get away with it for very long. Uh, the prospering of the wicked is, is but for a moment. But um, replacement theology is uh, it's been held by the Roman Catholics uh, pretty much since their inception. Um, they believe that the church has replaced the nation of Israel. God's all done with the nation of Israel. Uh, the Jewish people, there are no Jews, uh, you know, but there are. There are no Jews, but there are Jews. And the Jews that are there in, in Israel are wicked, but the church is the Jews. And it's, it's a really, really messed up system of, of belief. But I want to show you the key scripture about replacement theology. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. If you know your Bible, you know where I'm going with this. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, any commentator that tells you that the kingdom of heaven is where God lives uh, doesn't know what they're talking about. Nobody that is violent is going to take God's realm by force. Okay, what is this a reference to? Well, the book of Matthew is the only book in your entire Bible that contains the term kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is very clearly a reference to the physical kingdom on the earth. You see, way back when, when the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, he promised him physical land, okay, and his descendants, Abraham and his descendants. Now, those descendants, you can be born in with a spirit of adoption, that's true, as a Christian today. But the promise that God made to Abraham is still there for his physical descendants, with the Jewish people. And Jesus Christ is going to be ruling and reigning from that city. You see, if you look back in the book of Psalms, it talks about that this inheritance was given to you know, the king there that would come one day, and that is Jesus Christ. Okay, and you can do the whole study on that. I've, I've talked about that before. Jesus Christ is the Messiah that's, that already came, and he's coming back. And uh, he's going to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 25. But what is happening is, and this is, this is the very important part about replacement theology, because you see, it would only take one thing to eliminate God from his position. The Bible says God cannot lie over in the book of Titus. God cannot lie. But if Satan could prove that God lied even once, then he can say, hey, how can you claim to be God? How can you claim to be perfect? So Satan understands that he can't physically take God's position. But if he can get, if he can stop Bible prophecy from coming to pass, then God wouldn't be God. See, only an all-powerful, all-knowing God could tell you what happened in the past, what's happening in the present, and what's going to happen in the future. God would not be bound to time like we are. In other words, I can't tell you what's going to happen a week from today at this exact time. I can't tell you that, but God could. And God tells us in His Word what's going to happen with that nation of Israel. You read through the whole Bible, it's all about that Jewish nation and how that they get a good king and then they get a bad king and then they fall apart and then they, they do good things and then they do bad things. And it's, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you read through your New Testament, Jesus Christ comes, he presents himself as their king. Here he is, the kingdom of heaven is being preached. All right? They rejected him as their king. And he dies on the cross to pay for their sins. And now after that, after his death, burial, and resurrection, the this you know gospel is presented to the nation of Israel, and they again, nationally, they reject him again. Now, a lot of Jews got saved there in the first century, and there are still Jews that get saved today. Praise the Lord for that. But the fact of the matter is the nation of Israel at this point has rejected Jesus Christ. And these replacement theology heretics say, well, then how could you be God's chosen people and yet reject Jesus Christ? Well, because God makes promises, and God's not a liar like Satan is, and God made a promise to the physical uh, descendants of Abraham that they would one day get that land and Jesus Christ would be their king. That's the promise. Now, if you can 
spoil that. If you can go and you can, I mean, if, if they could destroy all the Jews, well, how can, you, how can you possibly have this prophecy fulfilled? See, that's why Satan has tried to destroy the Jews over and over and over again. And the Jews just keep coming back. They're kind of like weeds, you know. And I say that with respect and, and, you know, love for the Jewish people. But they're kind of like weeds. You know, you yank it and it's just like the roots are still there and they just and they spring up again. You know, and the Jews just keep springing up. And there was a six million of them lost their lives back during World War II. And uh, it's going to be even worse in the future. The time of Jacob's trouble is coming. But see, Satan, if he could just get those Jews killed, and you read the New Testament and you see that he almost does it, there's only going to be a small remnant that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, they're going to get slaughtered. And the slaughter is fast approaching. And I'm going to be doing a more detailed video on this exact subject. But replacement theology is what is needed to get rid of the Jews. And you say, well, how can we prove that they haven't been replaced? Well, read Romans chapter 11. The whole chapter proves that God is not done with the nation of Israel. Again, you can read that on your own time. But uh, th this is a very, very important study. And right now, the body of Christ is just about complete. And we're going to be leaving uh, at some point in, in time in the future. It could be this year. I, I really don't know. Um, but the fact of the matter is, the Jews are starting to come back on the scene again, the nation of Israel. And this momentum, this replacement theology momentum is building. And why? Well, because uh, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. How do you take the kingdom of heaven headquartered in, in Jerusalem? How do you take that kingdom when there's a bunch of Jews over there? You have to fight against the Jews. And how do you turn the world against the Jews to fight against them? You bring out propaganda films like Adolf Hitler did. That's what Stephen Anderson is doing. Stephen Anderson is not a saved man. I mean, if you haven't been convinced by the fact that he preaches a false gospel and he says so many heresies, it's just incredible. Um, the fact that he is just pouring all of his time and resources now into promoting his satanic film, this marching design film, um, and in, he wants to translate it into a hundred languages. Uh, eventually down the road, you know, if they can go far enough. And he's salivating over, you know, we need to get it out there for the Muslim world, you know. And again, I'm going to be showing this in an, in an upcoming video in more detail. But his purpose is the same thing as a Catholic purpose. And, you know, he even said it in one of his videos. It's one of my uh, Stephen Anderson and his lies videos, the Saul, S-A-A-H-L. You can watch those videos. He even says it right in one of the videos. Do I teach replacement theology? Well, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. He admits it. Uh, he's just another one of the Catholics that's out there that is trying to derail God's plans. If he can get enough propaganda built up to turn the world against the Jewish people, hey, you never know. If they could kill all the Jews, maybe they could win. Uh, sorry, Stephen Anderson, you're not going to win. And you and your Catholic bosses, uh, you aren't going to do it. As hard as you're going to try to overthrow God's plans to try and dethrone God uh, because your master Satan is leading you to do that, uh, it's not going to work. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of a prophecy. okay? Um, if Stephen Anderson doesn't lower his pride, drop his pride, and repent of what he has been preaching and what he has been doing against the nation of Israel, um, he's going to be destroyed by the Lord. I'm not going to do anything to him. I, whatever. You know, I'm just a preacher. I'm not going to do anything. But uh, you don't mess with that nation of Israel. You don't mess with God's prophecies right here. You don't, you don't go and say, I'm going to get rid of those Jews and we're going to turn against the Jews and everything else. Uh, you, you don't do that and get away with it. So, uh, And if you have one of these copies of this marching design, you need to burn that thing because it is a cursed object. I will guarantee you that it will bring God's curse and judgment upon your family, upon, upon your home, if you have that thing in there. If you've watched it, you need to repent of that thing. So that's going to be it for this video.